Lots of local issues on the table today with both the mayor of Jacksonville and a former mayor, the city council president. At the center of the discussion, this project outside the stadium in Lot J. Lenny Curry and Tommy Hazuri offer their opinion to the project that will cost hundreds of millions, both from the city and from the Jaguars' ownership. That's ahead on This Week in Jacksonville. So glad you're with us today. As I mentioned just a moment ago, City Council President Tommy Hazuri is with us and is a former mayor of Jacksonville and our guest uh, for this segment. I'd like to talk about uh, a few different city issues, but the one that certainly rises to the top right now is that proposed development of Lot J. Um, we know this, this past week on Thursday, uh, there was a meeting for City Council specifically on that. And from an outsider's perspective, it seemed like, boy, it didn't go as well as you had maybe hoped. What happened there? Well, I think... A lot of us are frustrated, I'm sure. And, you know, the um, coronavirus doesn't help and uh, feeling enclosed. But more importantly, uh, the disappointment that kind of triggered it all was, to me, was when our council auditor had a series of questions and didn't really get any answers. They haven't met. Uh, the auditor's office has not met Kim Taylor, our auditor, uh, since the last meeting we had a couple of weeks ago. And I asked her last night, at this time on, on uh, Thursday night, I said, uh, Kim, tell me when was the last time you talked to him? She said yesterday, which was on Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday at the time. And they had one scheduled for Tuesday, but the administration and the others canceled it. I said, well, when was the first time you talked to him? She said yesterday. Same day. So all, yes, I mean, she's had some phone calls, but nothing in detail. And they're drafting another document um, a financial document for, uh, I want to call it a bill, that uh, will change, even if we did some amendments last night, would change uh, the different sections of the of the bill. We don't know what's in there and why they're taking, they're not, they're taking their time, but not because they're not trying to rush it. And I'm saying the administration, they're taking their time because they don't have a bill prepared and they've been working on this issue for five years. Well, so let's, let's give some more context here. Our, our show last weekend, you, you heard Audrey Moran was with us. And one of the issues we talked about was Lot J and the proposed development there. But this is uh, basically a public-private partnership and it would create this entertainment center. Uh, this is a renderings, a video that the Jaguars and the development team put together to say, hey, hey, this is what this could look like. Uh, but Council President Azuri, is, as we're looking at these images, this represents a big investment by the city of Jacksonville, in addition to big investment by Shad Khan and the Jaguars, right. more than $200 million for each side, right? Right. So any objection there? Or, hey, because it's such a big ticket item, we need to really fine-tooth comb, see what we're getting for that money? And that's our fiduciary responsibility as a council. I don't know how, you know, maybe there's some votes there's on the council now that would vote for it no matter what information they get now. I don't know that. But, uh, you know, when you watch the body language, uh, then you wonder. And uh, But, you know, it's my responsibility as council president, but as a councilman at large, as well as it is for the other 18 council members, is to make sure we do our due diligence and above all, transparency throughout. We never heard from the, uh, the administration in their negotiations. It was a one-way street and there's no exit. And uh, for us, and I love Mr. Khan, I think he's done wonders here. But when you start reading about what we're trying to do here and then a Four Seasons, outstanding. And Mosh coming down and, and Gator Bowl or Stadium renov TIA uh, renovations that's going to come along and then the extension. But those are added dollars. And I don't think we need to look at that picture right now until we get this thing resolved. And uh, as far as, you know, we have another meeting scheduled. A, uh, Early in, December, is that right? In, on December the 3rd, okay. yeah. And the first one was December 5th. This, I mean, uh, November 5th. So this was a, the, the one on November was, early November was uh, really a, a, com a committee of a whole of the council, the same way it was last night. I was disappointed, just like some of the others, and I understand that, that we didn't get, uh, spend as much time with our council auditor and the uh, administration. And, you know, and when they did meet with her on that Wednesday, it was just a couple of others in the office, not Brian Hughes, who's been the big, the, you know, negotiator. Chief, uh, Chief Administrative Officer is uh, yes. the title for Brian Hughes right now. Let, let me read you. I, I spoke with Mayor Lenny Curry. You're going to hear much more from him in our next segment. But on this specific topic, uh, when I asked him, I said, hey, a lot of people feel maybe this is rushed. He said, let me ask a question. And he was saying it was rhetorical. 
It's rushed. What does that mean, it's rushed? What does that mean? Because we're following the process we follow as a city. The administration put forth legislation that includes development in Lot J, but the city council will take their time and do their work, and they ultimately have to press a green button or a red button, a yes or a no. Um, also, it takes two-thirds vote, by the way. Two-thirds A vote. lot of people don't realize because we're getting money from the Capital Improvement Fund, using that for our bonding capacity, so we're going to... The yeah. mayor sounds very uh, optimistic. optimistic. He says, hey, I think we'll get this done. Um, would you share that optimism, or are you more skeptical on this? I'm really not happening? skeptical, but skeptical, skeptical. Uh, because, you know, I like the vision. I'm a visionary. You know, if we didn't do some of the things back when I was mayor, you wouldn't be having the opportunity with our football team coming here. And the threat I heard today of, of um, maybe they may pull out. Uh, I hope that's not the case. Uh, when I was mayor, I used to say I don't want to lose the Florida-Georgia game nor have riots, and we got through that. And uh, here, I certainly don't want to lose Florida-Georgia, but I don't want to lose, and nor do I want riots. But, but also, um, I don't want to lose the Jaguars, yeah. but I, I, we've got to have an even playing field. And that's what I've been fighting for, uh, not to be opposed uh, to a project like this, but when you're talking about our money coming up front, and, um, and there's on the back end, and the, and you know we end up with so well, you get a building for a hundred million dollars, the entertainment live entertainment building, and I said I don't want to end up like the landing managing a shopping center, yeah. and I don't mean to call it in a derogatory mm -hmm. sense, but you know that's not You're our protective wheelhouse. Of that's not our wheelhouse. We don't manage property like that. I mean housing, yes, affordable housing maybe, but not uh, not a uh, not a uh, retail office. Uh, live entertainment. Uh, right. Th this th this comment was directed at you, so I want to I want to show uh, what Mayor Lenny Curry's chief of staff sent in a statement to his 39. He said, "We came here to engage and answer questions. The council president was not interested in that. We will continue to work with members as we have for months." What's your reaction to what Jordan Ellsbury said right there? Honestly, I don't trust him. Plain and simple. I've dealt with them too much and too long, and uh, they don't always come forward with. I don't mean the mayor. Uh, he doesn't get involved that much. I haven't spoken to him in a while. But uh, no, I just, you know, trust is like the soul to me. Once it leaves, uh, it never returns again. And it makes me hesitant when I hear them say stuff to us and that do I believe them or do I not believe them? And chances are, and I know they don't like to hear what I'm saying now, but they have to give me a reason to trust. And maybe some do, uh, but uh, the reputation that they have is uh, for nil for me, I uh, am for not. I just don't, uh, when we're dealing with something like this, they're representing the city just like we are. And they, make, they need to make sure that there's a good deal on both sides. I don't mind the developer getting their fair share and, but also want our taxpayers to get their fair share as well. Well, and I wanna bring this up. You were quoted uh, as saying about a week ago, uh, bottom line, we want a fair deal for both the taxpayers and the developer. Right now, it appears that the developers are getting the, the uranium mine and the city's getting the shaft. I still you feel, still that, feel way. that way. Yeah. Well, nothing's changed until they show me. Uh, my name is Thomas. <laughs> show me. I'm the show me candidate. <laughs> I'm the show me council president. Uh, and I'm not asking for too much. I think it's out of respect for the council. I hope that they respect what I'm asking about and asking for. Some may not, I mean, as you heard last night. But uh, I have to uh, do my due diligence. I have to be responsible uh, to the taxpayers, but also to Mr. Khan. I'm not going to treat him because point. he's a billionaire. There's a lot of millionaires that have development. I would treat all of them the same. Uh, council President Tom Hizuri, thanks for your time. Thanks Thank for you. insight. And I know we'll keep watching what's happening. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Well, Jacksonville's mayor once led the Republican Party in the state of Florida. When we come back, he's going to share his message to everyone in Duval County, no matter what party they belong to. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Come on. Oh. Let's go. Come on. Let's go in. Toyotathon is on. Tis the season for great year-end deals. Right now, during Toyotathon, get 0% APR for 48 months plus $500 holiday bonus cash on a new 2021 Toyota RAV4 and 90-day payment deferral. Don't miss out. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. I'm John Ossoff, and I approve this message. 
Weeks before the stock market crashed, the Senate received a classified briefing on COVID-19. That same day, David Perdue bought medical equipment stock. Then he bought vaccine shares, dumped casino stock, millions in stock trades, while the rest of us were in the dark. At the same time, David Perdue told us the risk was low and would have little impact on our economy. David Perdue lied to us while he lined his own pockets. At Farah and Farah, when we take your personal injury case, we never forget. It's about the money, your money, to get your life back on track. The Samsung Air Fry Oven is a time-saving, space-saving, holiday meal-making wonder. A gift for your kitchen brings joy to all. Shop the full Samsung suite of kitchen appliances now at Lowe's. If you need new eyeglasses, have no fear. Because at Eyeglass World, you can get your glasses super fast. That's right. Eyeglass World has in-store labs and same-day service. Which means you can zip in, zip out, and zip home. And with two pairs for $78, you're going to be a fan of the price, too. So schedule your eye exam online today and get your glasses fast at eyeglassworld.com, the world's best way to buy glasses. The frigid terrain of an untouched winter. Underneath this blanket of snow, a mystery awaits to be... Whoa! Accuracy season of performance event is on now. Don't miss it. Visit firstcoastaccuradealers.com for attractive offers on the RDX. The Trust Index. Checking every fact for your family. How much money do you think is owed to people in this zip code alone? Maybe a million? $8.8 .8 million. That's unbelievable. News 4 Jack's consumer investigator, Lauren Verno, on a quest to get you cash. Revealing how you could be owed free money. No small print, no strings attached. He has premium refunds. Oh, really? Mapping out the biggest treasure troves in every local county. Almost $100 million in Duval alone. Holiday Money Hunt, Monday starting at 5 p.m. on News 4 Jack's. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. And this week I spent time with Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry in his office. I also spoke with him about the Lot J development proposal that you just heard me discussing with Council President Hazuri. Mayor Curry calls it a big, bold, visionary project. He's in favor of it, but spoke about the process and that city council gets to decide ultimately if the it, it's the direction that Jacksonville should go. I asked Mayor Curry if the large price tag, $233 million by taxpayers, was scaring people away. Different people have different concerns for different reasons and that's why they can make their voices heard at City Council and City Council will get to make a decision. This is, and look, the, the decision will be, do we want as a city, do we want to do business with our owner that's willing to put a couple of hundred million dollars in phase one of his money in a city asset or not? For me, the answer is yes. Um, I hope the city council ultimately gets their questions, they'll get their questions answered, and I hope they agree with me. But if they don't, that's their job, and they'll hit the, the red button, and it'll be a no. no. But not the outcome you want, that's for no, sure. No, that's right? not the outcome I want. Um, but it, so, look, their questions are going to get answered, um, and uh, I think we're going to get there. You'll also find Mayor Curry's comments about the spread of COVID-19 and what to do with your Thanksgiving plans online at news4jacks.com. Now, I want you to hear what he told me about the new leadership at JEA, the recent election, dealing with violence in the city, and passing a half-cent sales tax for Duval schools. I think it was important, you know. I uh, supported it. I was vocal about it. Uh, I was on TV with a message speaking to the importance of it, and I'm glad it passed. I've got two of my three kids are in public schools. Uh, they have real needs, and uh, the people of Jacksonville demonstrated that they understand those needs and they care about our children. The year before, there was a push to get it on the, the ballot, and one of the things I think you expressed to me was, but a special election like that doesn't have as many people to turn out. Uh, you feel like that was the right call, or should it have been done a year ago, since it seems like so many people said, yeah, they were in favor of it? I think we made the right decision. And the important thing is, look, let's look forward. important thing is we got it done. We're going to have now what we need to get our schools right and good, right, good learning condition for our kids. So uh, it's a big victory for our city and our kids. Yeah.
um, JEA referendum was on there. And so this, that, that passed, and it takes some control in terms of uh, selecting members of the board from your office. How do you feel about that? Are you okay with that? Can you agree with uh, ceding some of that control, yeah, I guess? I'm fine. No issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but new CEO, Jay yeah. Stowe, um, what are your thoughts on their selection there? So I've always said, you know, that board, they're independent, uh, I'm confident that they're going to do all their due diligence and make the right decisions. Uh, so I applaud them on their choice. We, he and I spoke uh, last week and sometime probably into the month or early December, we're going to get together and get to know each other. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, he, he's expressed that. I reached out to his yeah. office this week. Hey, we'd like an interview. He said, I'm going to meet the stakeholders first. Yeah before I, I do something like that. Um, two other topics, if you don't mind. You've been, over the years, you've been a vocal supporter of Republican leadership, clearly, you know, chairman of the Republican Party right. of Florida at one point, a supporter of President Trump. Right. Uh, Duval County this time, more people voted for the Democrat. So what's your message to folks in Duval County? Uh, you're their mayor, and right. they know that you've been a, a President Trump supporter. What's your message to them? Because they said, we want a President Biden. I've always governed and led our city in a nonpartisan way. Uh, in fact, if you look at both of my elections, particularly the first one, because I ran against a Democrat. The last election, there wasn't a Democrat on the ballot. I ran against a Democrat, and more Democrats turned out and voted than Republicans my first, in my first election, which means I had crossover votes. Um, and I say that just to say that my public policy, my position is one city, one Jacksonville. Our issues, our local issues are not partisan. We certainly have national issues we can disagree on, but um, we're going to be unified here in Jacksonville and do what's best and right for our citizens, regardless of political party, regardless of who they support in national or state elections. Big issue, it seems like, uh, from the time I got here 10 years ago, would be what to do about some uh, of the, the crime problems. That's probably in any city. Here in Jacksonville, though, uh, you and I have talked about it for a few years now. What do we do about, what does the city do about a uh, rising number of homicides or gun violence and that sort of thing? It, the, the number pops out this year. Yeah, well, I think the important thing for people to know is that, as the sheriff would tell you, and the sheriff before him, John Rutherford, said the same thing, shared with me, talked to the state attorney about this, uh, most of this is uh, people that are in gangs, drug trade, illegal activities. That's where most of this is happening, in and amongst them. Um, so it's not, we're not the wild, wild west where you're going to have random drive-by shootings happening in neighborhoods on any given night. That said, uh, we're investing in tools and technologies to, uh, to stop it, to police it to arrest people that are committing these acts and to prosecute them. We're also investing in, through the Kids Hope Alliance, uh, prevention intervention programs, after school programs, summer jobs programs. So young people have the tools and the resources they need to make the right decision versus a gang decision or a drug trade decision. As of the middle of November, by unofficial count here in the Channel 4 newsroom, Jacksonville had seen 158 homicides during 2020. The total for all of 2019 was 161 homicides. All right, changing topics a little bit. The election was drawn out by late results and too close to call margins. Is the final outcome all but decided? Democrat Al Lawson joins us with his view from Capitol Hill. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. At Harrell & Harrell, we are dedicated to working hard for our clients. We will stand with you, fight for you, and work hard for you every single day. We're with you. Harrell & Harrell, call us, 251-1111. The Subaru Share the Love event brings big year-end savings and big donations from Subaru of Jacksonville with $500 donated to charities with every new car purchase. Take advantage of 0% financing on most models, no payments for 90 days, and big year-end savings. Drive a new 21 Forester for just $249 a month or own a 21 Outback for just $26,509 plus complimentary lifetime warranty or two years maintenance. Donating $500 with every new Subaru sold. Drive a Subaru. You'll buy a Subaru. Trust isn't something that's given, it's earned. And throughout our lives, we trust our doctors because they've been there for us with their dedication and courage. That's why we worked with them to design Ascension Complete St. Vincent's, a trusted Medicare Advantage plan that was made with your health in mind. It includes 
a $0 monthly plan premium and primary care doctor copay. Dental benefits, including an allowance for dentures and other dental services. $50 savings each month with a Part B premium rebate. Spiritual and emotional care with a chaplain. Anytime, anywhere. Call us today at 844-688-3870 to speak with an Ascension Complete St. Vincent's advisor and request your free enrollment guide. The annual enrollment period runs from October 15th to December 7th, so now is the time to switch. Ascension Complete St. Vincent's, a Medicare Advantage plan you can trust, made by the doctors you trust. 844-688-3870. Goodwill Industries is proud to have served North Florida for over 80 years. Through your donations, we create jobs, provide educational resources, and mentoring programs for people like Montarius. I was pretty much in, a, in, a, in like some trailer homes, taking like three buses to get to school. Take Stock and Children gave me the opportunity to attend college. Take Stock and Children's role under Goodwill is we come in and we help them attain their goals and dreams. If it wasn't for Take Stock, I, I wouldn't be here. We are Goodwill, removing barriers to employment. In times of tension and strife, look to the first responders. In times of adversity and struggle, look to your first informers on The Morning Show, keeping you posted when unexpected changes break overnight. More shootings in just a matter of hours. Rerouting you away from danger and delays. Take 95 as your alternate route. Making the busiest mornings a little brighter. Facing the fall, it's a newsletter to help bring you those answers. The Morning Show on Channel 4, the local station. Become a local VIP with News 4 Jack's Insider. Behind-the-scenes access, live Q&As with anchors, exclusive weather tools, first dibs on local discounts and events. Join News 4 Jack's Insider today. Channel 4, the local station. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. Thanks for staying with us. In this segment, Congressman Al Lawson joins us, the U.S. Representative for Florida District 5. Representative Lawson is joining us by Skype from Tallahassee, and, and I appreciate the time this morning. I'd also like to talk about President-elect Biden trying to get a transition to happen, and so far it's been without cooperation from the White House. How do you feel about President Trump's really a stubbornness on this issue? I think it's very bad. Uh, never before in American history have we had uh, this kind of uh, situation that exists because, you know, not only uh, did you lose, but at the same time, you got to be more concerned about uh, uh, the American people and the safety of our country. And so there are certain things that need to be done during transition uh, that it hasn't taken place. So it, it's not very good for this country. Yeah, um, what we've seen even just this week, we saw Georgia certifying results saying that uh, Joe Biden had more votes in that state. Uh, as this process plays out, do you anticipate that there will be a point where President Trump will say, OK, now it's time. Let's get the uh, Biden-Harris administration going with the transition. Well, I think at a certain point, he really needs to do it. It needs to come up uh, pretty soon. You got inauguration coming up in January. And at the same time, uh, Biden and his people are working, but they're working against different odds that no one else has had to work against. So, you know, the president, you had four years. You know, you did the best that you could do in four years, and now it's good to... Uh, uh, to cooperate with everyone else. You have ex-president saying you have members on both sides of the aisle, especially some of the Republican yeah. members when I talk to them. You know, they're ready to move forward. And the right. president really needs to just kind of get out of the way and be very helpful. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's not helping in this country at all to uh, heal wounds and to bring everybody together uh, so we can get on with uh, taking care of American people. People are hurting right now because of coronavirus and uh, uh, you know, we need stimulus money. We need to yeah. help people uh, who are suffering, and uh, he's standing in the way. Hey, Congressman, I do want to hear about that. Uh, will there be a new stimulus or, or COVID-19 relief package before the end of the year or before the, the new Congress uh, is is really in place? Well, we certainly hope, hope so because, you know, uh, the meetings uh, between the leadership broke down. Uh, we passed uh, a stimulus package and sent it over to the Senate about four or five months ago, and it's just been a standoff. And now people, you know, you travel up and down this district all over America, uh, people are not concerned about the argument and the position between Democrats and Republicans. What they're concerned about is helping their families, putting food on their table, uh, being able to uh, uh, get through the holiday of Thanksgiving and through Christmas. And it's time for us to take action, you know, and I tell my colleagues, uh, even the leadership, you know, hey, we got to do something. You know, we can't afford to let 
uh, this happened throughout the holidays, you know, and that's what it's all about. It's not about us. It's about the people who sent us there. You know, these seats and everything belong to the American people, yeah. uh, not to the leadership in the House or the leadership in the Senate. Congressman, lots of military members in our area. Do you want to see all the troops in Iraq and Afghanistan withdrawn, or do you think that there's still a mission to be completed there? Lots of controversy about that this week. Right. Well, you know, all the former great military uh, generals and so forth said that it really would be bad for us to pull out. You know, people lost a lot of life over there. We put a lot in this country to, uh, you know, control the Taliban. And the president is more trying to fulfill a promise instead of doing what is right. You know, it's time now uh, to uh, pay attention to the people who have been there and know what is going on. And at the same time, this is wrong for us to just an automatic withdrawal in the early part of January before uh, the incoming president takes office. It does not make sense, you know, and uh, this is not anything you're going to play around with. You know, uh, you think we've been over there around 20 years or so, and we want to make sure that whatever take place, that it is appropriate, that it's done correctly, uh, and it, it solved the problem with uh, these international relationships that other people are involved in. Yeah, uh, NATO, everyone else looks at what America does in terms of troop deployment uh, and, and standing up people there. Hey, maybe last thing here, Congressman, now that most of the election cycle is over, we still have those two Senate seats up in Georgia, but will lawmakers be able to work, uh, I, I don't know, work together and compromise? It's something you've talked to me about over the years. Will that happen? Well, we should, uh, you know, uh, those elections in January the 5th are so in there, and I know everybody's going to be involved. But the American people need help right now. And uh, it's not about those Senate seats right now. It's about whether we care about our taxpayers and people who are giving so much who are out of work. You know, shopping centers are closing. Businesses are closing down. They need a stimulus package right now. And that's what it's about, even though there's election going in. Oh, why should we wait till the end of January? We have the resources yeah. right now to make that happen. Yeah. And even the outgoing president has asked for a, a big stimulus right. pack. Uh, Congressman, That's we're running we out of time, but I appreciate your time this morning, and it's good to see you. And thanks for offering some hope uh, that, that things can change here. Appreciate your time in Tallahassee today. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you very much, Ken. It's very great to see you. All right. So uh, coming up among our guests next week, former Republican Mayor John Delaney, chairman of the Jack Civic Council, plus Duval County Democratic Party Chair Daniel Henry. Duval went blue in the presidential election for the first time in ages, but the statewide party seems pretty frustrated. Join us next week on This Week in Jacksonville, Sunday mornings at 9. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida and South Georgia's number one source for local news.